Today I'd like to reflect with you on the Gospel for Friday of the 22nd week in Ordinary Time. It's taken from Luke chapter 5, verses 33 through 39. The scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, The disciples of John the Baptist fast often and offer prayers, and the disciples of the Pharisees do the same, but yours eat and drink. Jesus answered them, Can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. And he also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to patch an old one. Otherwise he will tear the new, and the piece from it will not match the old cloak. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be ruined. Rather, new wine must be poured into fresh wineskins. And no one who has been drinking old wine desires new, for he says, the old is good. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, for us to understand today's gospel, we have to think about what has preceded it in the fifth chapter. Yesterday at Mass, we heard the first 11 verses, the call of the fishermen. Jesus told Peter, put out into the deep for a great catch. And Peter did, and the nets were at the point of breaking. And and Peter said to Jesus, depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. But the Lord would not depart from him and said, come and I will make you a fisher of men. And he left his nets, and as did James and John, Zebedee's sons, and they left everything, and they followed Jesus. Jesus then went on to heal a leper. That was one of the signs of the coming of the Messiah. When Jesus began his public ministry in Galilee, he came in the power of the Spirit into the synagogue, first in Nazareth and then in Capernaum. His healing miracles that he performed were a sign of the Messianic presence. After healing a leper, Jesus went on to heal a paralytic. But before he even healed the paralytic and told him, pick up your mat, he also told the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. Jesus came for the forgiveness of sins. But even even making the lame walk was a sign again of his messianic presence. Jesus would be a Messiah, but not in the sense that people thought. He would be a suffering servant who would redeem his people. After healing the paralytic, Jesus continued on and he found Levi sitting at his customs post. And he said, follow me. And again, Levi, just like Peter and James and John, left everything to follow the Lord. He then held a banquet in his house for tax collectors, sinners. Some of the Pharisees were even there. And that is the context within which Jesus receives these questions from the Pharisees. He is eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners. Their association with him is a sign that they one day too will eat in the, at the banquet table of the Eternal Father, whereas the Pharisees thought only those who strictly followed and kept the law would ever dine at the banquet of the Heavenly Father. The rest were to be excluded. But Jesus came to be the Messiah. He came to redeem and save what was lost. And so he offers tax collectors and sinners hope. But now the scribes and Pharisees, they don't criticize Jesus directly, but they criticize his disciples. Why do they eat and drink? And Jesus gives two answers. The first, he he makes reference to himself as the bridegroom who will be taken away. Right now he is with them, so it's a time of feasting but eventually he will be taken away. Already his mission, his messianic mission, is pointing to the cross. He will have to suffer and die for his people in order to redeem them. He will die for them for the forgiveness of their sins. He will pour out his own blood for them to make his bride pure and whole and holy. Jesus tells a parable then about a new cloak that uh, need that will have to replace one that is torn rather than trying to patch an old cloak. In the same way, he speaks of no one pouring new wine into old wineskins, but rather they're poured into fresh wineskins because if they're poured into the old, in the old, the old skins will burst. What is he getting at? 
Through his blood, he will inaugurate the new and everlasting covenant. It is the new wine of the new covenant, his blood for the forgiveness of sins. And this outpouring of blood, this is a sign of God's love for us. That this love makes demands. Does it bring about a change in us? Yes, in another place in scripture, Jesus says, See, I make all things new. St. Irenaeus of Lyon says that in bringing himself, Jesus made all things new. He has made all things new in bringing himself. But some people will say the old is good. The Pharisees were content to stay in their old ways, whereas tax collectors and sinners associated themselves with Jesus and changed and were converted. The Pharisees were content with the old. Ah, the old is good. The old is good enough for me. But is it good enough for the Lord? Are we content with our, the way we have been living? Or could we still have a deeper conversion to Christ? He makes all things new, even us. Are we willing to change? That is the point. The tax collectors and sinners were willing to change. The Pharisees were not. Jesus wants something to make something new in you. He wants you to have life in abundance. And so he has given himself entirely for you. He has poured out his blood for you, inaugurating the new and eternal covenant. May we all always live faithfully according to the terms of that covenant.